I'm in Luxor. Hello, everyone. My name is Antonio, and I'm in front of the Luxor temples. It's uh, my most favorite, my favorite temples in uh, Egypt. It's a temple that was built in 1400 before Christ, and it was connected with the Karnak Temple for one month and a half with uh, the Alley of the Sphinx. You can see them behind me, half humans, half lions. The temples of Luxor, contrary to other temples, was not dedicated to any deity, any gods in particular, but it was used for ceremonies in coronation of kings and other events. The entrance of the temple has uh, four statues. They all represent the King uh, Ramses II. Two are two massive statues of the king sitting on his throne. The entrance also had two obelisks. The obelisks are symbol of the sun, of the gas sun, and they are 25 meters tall and they weigh more than 100 tons. At the base of the of the obelisk, there are macaques, monkeys, with their palms wide open because the Egyptian has observed had observed that the macaques every morning they will stretch out their palms, the palms of their hand, and they believe that the, they were worshiping the sun. Originally, there were two obelisks. But in 1883, the Viceroy Mehmet Ali of the Ottoman Empire decided to give as a gift one of the obelisks, the one that was standing over there on the other side, as a gift to the King Charles X of France. Everybody considers, historian considers this as a gift, but it's a uh, doesn't make any sense. It's like these were also the Ottoman Empire was a colonial power of uh, Egypt. It's like I come to your house, I take over your house, and then I dispose as I like of the property of your grandmother, great grandmother, and I give it away as a gift. So now the other obelisk stands in the Place de la Concorde in Paris and it doesn't belong there. Like many article, articles from uh, France, from Egypt, has been uh, spread out throughout the world, including the US, through stealing. Because colonial powers were coming to Africa, Asia, the Middle East. They were exploiting the people, they were oppressing the people, they were stealing their properties the cultural heritage and until today these articles sit in the museums all over Europe, all over the US, all over the world and it's just part one of the dark side of colonialism. After World War II the survivor of Holocaust claim all their belongings back art valuables from the German government and other governments that collaborated with the Germans and, co and supported the Holocaust and they received all their belongings back. However, the gov government people of Africa, people of the Middle East, people of Asia are having a hard time getting uh, their culture Artecraft back. Countries have also instituted laws that prohibit returning those artecrafts. One time, I, the first time I went to Ethiopia, one guy, once he found out that I was uh, Italian, he told me that I had to return the obelisk of Aksum. It's a city in the north of uh, Ethiopia. 
I had no idea what he was talking about. Well, Italy too stole an obelisk, Ethiopian obelisk. And eventually, a few years later, after my first visit to Ethiopia, he was returned. But certain countries like Britain continues to hold and they enacted a law that prohibit for, uh, for them to return the, uh, what they stole. So the other obelisk, this is like a va uh, vandalism. I know that uh, Macron, the president of France, will not subscribe to my channel. But uh, if he's listening, please return the obelisk to Egypt. You can replace the obelisk in uh, Plaza La Concorde with the obelisk, a copy like the one in Washington DC. But enough with the, this uh, introduction. Let's enjoy the temple. It's a beautiful temple. As I said, it's my favorite temple because it has massive statues and I love statues, a representation of human beings. Just amazing. I came last year here and it was empty. There were no people. I came this time and I waited a little bit because I was hoping that uh, the many buses that kept coming in, they will not, they will eventually leave, but they keep coming in because this temple, I found out, is a temple that stays uh, open until late. The temple of Karnak closes at 5.30. This one closes at uh, 8.30. There are massive columns, it's just beautiful. This temple was covered for a long time until the 1800s by soil and uh, if, until it was discovered and then it was uh, brought back to its glory. There's no need to describe the beauty. Of course, if you have an opportunity to come here, it's much better to feel it in person. The Romans also used this temple as the a military, uh, military position, military headquarters. And then eventually in the 300, they built a church over here, in this part. And in 600, the church was uh, converted into a mosque. So that makes this temple the longest used religious building in history for more than 3,000 years. So this is the mosque and every day, five times a day, there is a call to prayer coming up, coming out from those speakers. And this is my favorite part here with all these huge, huge statues representing uh, Ramses II and his family. That's his son over there in the middle. It's just, I'm just speechless. I love this place so much. Oh, I'm, I'm just in heaven here. I feel history. I feel history through these stones. As I said in my video in Karnak, there are different theories how the Egyptians were able to build uh, all of this. But still, no, this society is still not sure how they built it. This was the wife of uh, Ramses, I believe, represented here behind me. You can see her. Let's go inside. The temple is not as big as the temple of Karnak, so it can easily be seen in a short time. Of course, to go through all the details, it will take much longer. I highly recommend for everybody, anybody to come to Luxor. 
and visit uh, the temple. Yeah, these columns are uh, columns right here. They are built in the shape of the papyrus, the plant of the papyrus. With in uh, ancient Egypt, was considered a sacred plant and also a useful plant because, as everybody knows, papyrus was uh, used for as we use paper right now. It's a beautiful sunset. As you can see, it's very crowded. I swear the last year, there was nobody here at this time. Now, I waited for almost an hour outside, hoping that it would be less crowded, but I gave up my hope and I didn't want to come when it was dark. Look how beautiful, guys. And this is the temple in the background. This was used as a church. It's still the first class from the Romans. This is mean the god of fertility. You can see why. It's just beautiful. So this is a call of pr uh, pr a prayer at the mosque here inside the...